of online or we got logged in first? We've just started now, David. Uh, Where's Tim? Hello, how's it Tim, topic is intellectual disability and with that it's also making Tim, sure I can't hear you well uh, yeah can you hear me any better if I sit closer can everybody else hear me yeah. yes you're good, you're good. oh good all right so uh, where, where was I our topic is uh, intellectual disability and making sure that we and the disabled community aren't Tim, being can you speak into the mic? Is it your audio only, David? Maybe you need to um, take your earphones out, plug them back in or something. Uh, yeah, David, uh, David, sign out and then log back in. I'll sign out and log back in? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can right. hear you. Sorry, Tim, what was that? Sorry, people. This is me. We yeah, have some technical issues. Yeah, the joys of technology. The joys of technology. <laughs> it's all good. Sorry, yeah, Tim. Yeah, so you guys can hear me at a normal volume, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all good. Yeah, I think it was just his end playing up. Good. Yes, sir. Tim. Tim. Yeah, go on first, Jonathan. What were you saying? So, tell us more how we what are the main issues faced by people with cognitive Disability. Yeah, uh, some issues that are faced, there are also issues that are commonly experienced. You'd probably experience them yourself being a person with a speech impairment, uh, but that people tend to exclude you in conversation. And in particular, if you have someone with you um, who is uh, not disabled, um, people who are trying to speak to you will tend to talk to the person who's more able, I guess. And um, with that, people with intellectual disabilities, when they do speak, uh, if they speak verbally, that is, their uh, ideas and thoughts are often just brushed off by people and, you know, people don't really take the time to actually engage with the person and see them as the whole person, not just labelling them as somebody who's not worth a conversation or interaction with. Yeah, or flow as well. Yes, yeah, so people with intellectual disabilities. Sorry, Tim. 
Um, they're often labeled as being slow. And uh, that won't respond uh, uh, quickly, which I find uh, rude and intimidating. But yeah, in saying that, yeah, you just gotta acknowledge them for who they are and engage with them in conversations. Yeah. And when, when we say intellectual or cognitive disability, it doesn't always mean that the person is slow, so to speak. It could also just be something like autism or it's a, it's a term to describe any sort of disability affecting the brain. It doesn't necessarily mean someone's intelligence is involved, but even then it's important to remind people that intelligence isn't a measure of whether someone's a person or not. You should treat everybody as equal, whether they whether you believe they can understand you or not just you know engage with people and treat them like nothing's wrong with them because that's ideally what we want as people with physical disabilities and we also need to advocate for those in the disabled community who can't advocate for themselves because they uh, struggle to communicate or can cannot speak for themselves yeah yeah true True. Yes, and I get also another point is we need to ensure there are more resources in easy English so we don't exclude people with cognitive disabilities. Yeah, that's a good point you make. I see that no, you're back you. now, David. Can you hear me better now? Much better. Yeah, I think you might have just had a dodgy connection at first, uh, but I'll, I'll bring you up. To, I'll bring you up to speed if you want. Yeah, um, we were just discussing how uh, people with intellectual disability are discriminated against because, um, for instance, people they don't want to talk directly to the person with um, a speech or intellectual disability, and they tend to talk to somebody who's with them. And you know, exclude them from conversation. And um, we were also on about how uh, just because somebody has an intellectual disability or their intelligence is affected, it doesn't make them any less of a person. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's a summary of what we were talking about in the time that you were. So, so, is it just uh, intellectual disabilities or other disabilities also? Uh, mainly, we're discussing intellectual but it, it kind of overlaps because it's more the domain of like communication yeah so um, you know being denied um i guess access in a social environment like being able to socialize like everyone else i guess that's a, a right yeah. that we all deserve I, just, I, just, I guess it happens with other disabilities also yeah. because like someone that's blind also they ask the person with them you think uh, that's good? They'll ask which is better for him. Why don't they ask me? Yeah, I know what I yeah, want. Yeah, exactly. It also happens to people w without um, intellectual disability. But I think the, uh, the thing that sets intellectual disability apart from um, those of us with physical disabilities is that um their communication is affected so these people um when, when people say something or, or do something they're not quite happy about they can't really communicate that or uh, if they do communicate it people will ignore them or brush them off and say oh that person's just having a behavior or they'll say like rude stuff like that when the person might be conveying that they're unhappy with the situation and people just misinterpret that so we're, I guess we're trying to raise awareness of uh, the different communication styles that people possess and mm. 
a good example of that would be how we're all like uh, it's not really my domain because it's more speech therapy so i'll try explain it simply but we all communicate in a few multi ways so for instance you can communicate through writing uh, typing or texting and you can also use your voice and i guess making people aware that and, and there are different ways to communicate sign yeah go on. yeah sign language is a great example of one of the ways you can communicate without using your voice and also with that there's you know typing digital things uh, people who communicate through tablets so if you do meet someone with an intellectual disability and they don't speak verbally it's not to say that they don't speak at all and you should take the time to learn to speak with them and also i like to say that people who have communication difficulties not all of them have intellectual disability a, a good example here is is jonathan he has a cerebral palsy accent i refer to a, the term as because people tend to understand that but he is one of the most business-minded people i know he's, you know he's yeah. a normal Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We, we can all communicate uh, one way or another. It's just a matter of finding a way. Uh, it, I, I honestly believe there is no reason that any human couldn't be able to communicate something with someone. There's many ways to do it. And yeah, being aware of that, I think that's an important thing to keep in people's mind that not everybody speaks verbally and Verbal speech isn't the be-all and end-all or the marker of 
uh, intelligence. It, like it can also go the other way. Um, your example, Jonathan, of people assuming that you're not all there just because of how you speak. Um, for, for instance, with people with autism and stuff, some of us uh, who are labelled uh, "quote unquote" high functioning. Uh, that although that is a term that's coming to an end of use now because it's got other connotations attached to that, but we'll go into that later. Um, but yeah, and, people and also, tend to think that oh, you're not disabled or you don't have the condition because you don't sound like it. So yeah, it comes back to not judging books by cover, whether you're judging them for better or worse. And also, with people with vision impaired, they think they're blind and deaf at the same time. So they shout to them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, or like people raise their voice and stuff. Yeah. It's like, seriously, I'm here. I'm not, I'm not across the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's funny how, like, that just seems to be a general thing that people with disabilities receive. In ge- like, that, that's what I've noticed. Because even when I'm out in my chair and stuff in the community, people raise their voice or, or talk to me to, in a way that you'd talk to like a, a preschool or a toddler and it's just weird to see how people can change their behavior like that just based on how you look yeah yeah true, true. But yeah any, any other points that we have to cover i'm here from because he's been quiet tonight. So if we do have any thoughts you would like to Look, I, I, I agree with everyone on this. Uh, it's uh, people with intellectual disability as well as the people with the disability in general are uh, often mistreated. Um, don't have the same respect that those who are not uh, with disability. Um, I, I agree with him. Uh, people who talk down on us. They talk to us like uh, preschoolers. Um, and often their, their attitude and their, I guess, the way that they talk to you is different to the way they talk to a person who uh, does not have a disability. It should not be that way. But the reality is, it, it is that way. It can, it can be, uh, I guess, uh, unfair for the person with a disability. Especially those that do have an intellectual disability or a cognitive disability as well. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just not good for their health. Um, yeah, so how, how do we, uh, we are just, uh, I guess, we as uh, human beings to just acknowledge them and make them feel part of the group. Doesn't matter what disability they have. We should all just uh, sit there and talk to one another about like humans. Because at the end of the day, we are human. And you need to remember that. Yeah. 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 If, if, if there's someone that can't, that you, you find has got a different disability, I've, I've met I've met people on the train that are deaf, and then yep. they get told me they told me um they told me do you need do you, they ask me if I need any help I go well I'm okay I go they, they go yeah, are you you've got a disability like me I go what's your disability she goes I'm deaf I go how many, how you how you how you reading my how how you hear my what I'm saying. Okay, I'm reading your lips. See, there's uh, a lot of people who have talent. They have hidden talents, but they're not recognized because uh, all people see is a disability. 
Nota è bellissima, ma la tizia è bellissima. Yeah, that, that's a good point you raise. Life with a disability, it can make you quite skillful in some areas. Like, yeah, lip reading, it's super difficult. And whoever can actually pull it off and understand what people are saying, I, I have the most respect for them. But I feel like we should also uh, try encourage the use of sign language more so people don't have to resort to learning lip reading as their only source of communication because um, from what I've heard from quite a few friends uh, in the deaf community, they feel like they're quite isolated because that's the only way they can understand their world is they have to make all the effort. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, do you think it would help if hypothetically sign language or sign was offered as an elective in high school? Yeah, I think it would it been it would benefit to have it in a lot of inst educational institutions at different levels. Uh, I think teaching it to primary school children would be really beneficial because I know already schools teach spoken languages. So to speak something that would allow all Australians to be able to speak with their fellow Australians whether they're hearing or not would be really beneficial and it also um It's not just a benefit for the deaf community. Uh, it, it's useful if you're trying to communicate from afar. Uh, divers and stuff use hand signals to communicate. It, it's got many uses. Um, so you could potentially have programs starting in kindergarten and, and those really young age ranges. Uh, also, yes, offering an elective in high school would be a really good idea. And I think... Uh, Well, in my opinion, this is really important because this these are the people who go on to work um, with people with disabilities. Is healthcare workers in particular um, in university should learn some basic form of ASL, in my opinion. That would be a, a really useful thing. Yeah. I have to say that with the ABC in the recent CBD pandemic, they've been really good at promoting sign language but I guess part of why Australian disability exists is to create media for people with disabilities and I'm just wondering in the future maybe we could look at getting an Australian interpreter to join us to make sure the podcast is accessible to anyone who tunes to watch all the And if your vision is bad. 
Yeah, I think that would be a really good idea. The more accessible, the better for everyone. It's all about inclusion. Yeah, it's all about inclusion. Also, with people uh, visually impaired, if there's menus, at least put the menus on the internet and be more accessible via the phone. That way, that way we can read the menu. I wouldn't have to ask all the time. Yeah, yeah, but for the board class, I think, uh, yeah, like John was saying, make a more accessible for people with disabilities, different disabilities. Yeah. So, yeah, make it inclusive for everybody. I've got a story of when I first went to work at a factory with people with all disabilities. The first guy, the first person, the manager that introduced me to the first guy there, he goes, this guy is blind and deaf. He introduced me to him. He walks me. He, he did a few different triangles on his hand. And he said, the guy said my name. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. See it. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to aim for here. Yeah. More inclusive society. So, yeah, it's all good there. Yeah, exactly. We, we all benefit from an inclusive society. Yeah. Uh, Look, I like it. Sorry, David, what are you saying? Any people watching? Any questions? I think we got a. So we have a comment from Sanjay. Thank you for watching Festival Season. The deaf community have inter. And you study in general on the NGIS if it's on the plan. That's good to know. But I guess what I'm advocating for is some people don't view sign language or an as a proper language and when they see it on TV some idiots I mean I was wonder why an interpreter is standing next to you know the prime minister or premier so i guess we need to break down that ignorance and Tell the general 
community that our land is like Arabic or Hebrew in a language in its own right. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so I think regarding final points, um, just that uh, intellectual disability doesn't make a person any more or any less of a human and to just treat all people with dignity and equality. You can be no, surprised. You'll be surprised how much how much knowledge they have. Yeah, yeah, and skills as well. So yeah, always including me, engage with them. Don't ever leave them now, and always give them the same yeah. level of respect as they would without a disability. And that's the final word from me is people with cognitive disabilities have a valid and unique per to make you on life society and people shouldn't be prejudiced just because they may express them so they to be open minded enough to strike up a conversation. So we've got to be open minded to to open up a, a conversation with them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. True, true. And don't yeah. be afraid to talk long. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. Okay. I know this is kind of so strange seeing how I advocated from uh, for a open dialogue, but we reached the end of another episode of Crips as your weekly pod. Christ on everything disability. Remember, share, like, subscribe, and we'll be here every Friday on Facebook. YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Join us daily for more scripture. Yeah, bye everyone. Bye. 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 bye.